and it is hot today too so that's kind of appropriate <laughs> and it's your boy icon with another wrestling review let's talk about the wrestling with a little nxt heat wave also go on my channel and check out my money in the bank review which is live so this particular show it comes after and i like that I like the fact that we have one pay-per-view, like a main roster pay-per-view on a Saturday, and then the NXT pay-per-view on a Sunday. I hope they keep that going. Hit the notification bell on my YouTube channel, like it or subscribe, and check out some more goodness with other videos that I have going on. So there was a pre-show match on this one, and you know we're dressed in the gold for the black and gold, and we're live from you know we're live from Toronto in Canada <laughs> for for this one. They spent the whole three-day weekend like SmackDown, um, Money in the Bank, and NXT. I said I, I I definitely like that. Like I hope they do that shit all the time. But then I guess when Netflix and like the Fox deal, well the the CW deal and all that stuff. I guess when all that stuff happens, like things are gonna change. So uh, unlike the main roster, we did get a pre-show match on this one, and it was Jasmine Nix who sh really honestly should just name herself Jasmine Minx. <laughs> this was the pre-show match. Uh, she should just be Jasmine Minx because, like, she's sexy as hell. She has the look. Um, her gear, her wrestling gear looks a lot better than it did before because like, before it was kind of like, you could, you could tell she was new with her wrestling gear, but now she actually looks like she has, like, real wrestling gear. Her and JC Jane versus Ariana Grace, who was, like, the conquering baby face or whatever, and Carmen Petrovich. Uh, one... I'm still not sold on Carmen Petrovich. One, she needs to drop the last name. Just call her Carmen. Two, the whole, like, samurai sword gimmick thing, it's just, like, she doesn't have the look. Like, she doesn't, like, I understand she did this in real life and she actually knows what she's doing, but when you see her with the sword in your hand, you don't look intimidated. Like, she doesn't actually, like, look the part. But if she's going to continue to do it, if it's something that she wants to do, my whole thing is just wear the Kill Bill outfit and get it over with. So <laughs> now this was a tag team match that they put together from, um, you know, from NXT. And I don't know where all this offense came from <laughs> with the Ariana Grace, but she was out here looking like Ricochet <laughs> with everything that she was doing. You know, Jasmine Nix, like she, you know, she actually, she did the damn thing. Like, you know, you can tell like her in-ring skill is improving. But then actually in the end, there was a moment where um so they, they did like a bootleg heart attack with a kick instead of a clothesline. And then in the end, Jasmine Nix had rolled up, um, Carmen in a, in a schoolgirl, I was about to say schoolboy, she had rolled her up in um, the schoolgirl, the package roll, whatever the hell we call it, but she, basically she rolled her up, and then, and, you know, like, where she's, like, sitting on her ass, and, like, you know, shoulders are on the mat, and the referee got the two, then Ariana Grace, who's the baby face in this match, but she cheated, because she's actually still a heel at heart, she cheated, she grabbed Jasmine Ninks by the hair, yanked her down to reverse the pin, and then Carmen got the roll up instead, and then she got the one, two, three victory, and Jasmine and JC were yelling at the referee, like, yo, this, this bitch grabbed my hair, so that was actually pretty funny. Like I said, I like Ariana Grace as a character. Like, she's actually a really good character. And, I mean, I never took her seriously as a wrestler because she was always just, like, the goofball with the waving and, like, the Miss America and all. But I'm like, wow, like, in this one, I'm like, she actually has a talent. Like, <laughs> she, actually, she can actually wrestle. So we'll see what happens. Like I said, they got the big, the hometown crowd pop and everything. Like, they conquered, like, you know, like, the bad girls or whatever. So that was a nice little pre-show match. And now let's move on to NXT Heat Wave main show. So the show opened up with the NXT North American Men's Championship, Obafemi, the champion, versus the Cardiac Kid Wesley. And do we not announce the championship match competitors anymore? Like, I thought we were supposed to do the thing where we say, in this corner, we don't do that anymore. Like, the match just started, so I don't know if they were just, like, trying to hurry up for time purposes or whatever the case may be. I was also surprised that this match went first. But it went exactly how I thought it was going to go because Obafemi killed this kid. Like, he, there was a point where, like, he picked him up and literally, like, hoisted him, like, 90 years into the air. And, like, like he tried, Wes tried, though. <laughs> like, I ain't going to lie. Like, Wes fought hard. Like, he really tried. He really tried. But, uh, nah. <laughs> he wasn't, you wasn't getting that one, dog. So, um, yeah, in the end, you know, he caught him, put him with the power bomb, put him on his ass, and, whoo. Obafemi is your still your North American champion. And I saw on um on social media that Moose from TNA had called out Obafemi and I swear to god, I feel like I talked that one into existence cuz I brought it up last time and I really want to see that match. So, let's get Moose out here and let's get Obafemi versus Moose. Cause I want to see that shit. But <laughs> good uh good good outing by Wesley. Maybe he'll fight Trick Williams next if he retains tonight and we'll move on to the next one. Next up, we have the NXT Women's North American Championship, Sol Ruka versus the beautiful Kalani Jordan. And I'm just going to say this. 
when NX, what NXT, when WWE 2K25 comes out and they finally put Kalani Jordan in the game, her reversal rating better be in the 90s. These two women, like, this was a counter match. <laughs> like, this was a counter fest. Like, their reversals, their countering, like, everything was off the chain for the two of them. I didn't realize how much bigger Sol Ruka was than Kalani Jordan. And, you know, they were pretty much, they were basically evenly matched, you know, like, outside of the power game. But, you know, due to a couple of, then, like, Kalani avoided the soul snatcher and you know she was able to catch her off a top rope like poison rana she hit the spring leg and moose salt that she stole from naomi and <laughs> Kalani jordan picks up the victory over soul ruka and i'm happy about that because i mean like soul ruka's a good athlete and i like her and all but i'm like nah like we, we go we, we we run with Kalani. because then also like well one thing i will say about soul ruka though this match actually did prove that she's not just a one-trick pony because the problem that i have with soruka is everybody's like over the moon with her only because of her finisher and i'm just like she hasn't really done anything to showcase that she has more than that but in this match she actually did so you know but i said she'll she'll be a you know she'll be a north american women's champion one day just not at the expense of kalani jordan like the queen still wears the crown and has the belt and we're moving on to the next match and once again we didn't get in a, like a championship like announcement so i guess we're not doing the announcements <laughs> anymore because we're short on time next up was the NXT Tag Team Championships, which I forgot were even on the line. Once again, no announce, no team announcement. And I had no idea who I was supposed to root for in this match. I didn't know who were the faces, who were the heels, but earlier in the night, they were saying that Nathan, Nathan Frazier never showed up to the arena. Axiom was getting worried. They teased, like, dissension and, you know, like, them not being on the same page. During the match, there was actually dissension where the two of them, you know, like, hit each other. One of them super kicked the other one in the face. So it was actually making it look like they, they were off. They weren't on the same page and they were gonna, you know, like, lose the titles. But they eventually ended up getting it together. Chase, you actually came to play. Like, I can't even front. And the thing with Andre Chase, like, he needs to find something else to wear besides, like, it's like at this point wrestling in the sweater and like the, um, the the white collared shirt like he can wear the sweater he can wear the collar shirt but once he has matches i'm like bro just get a chase you t-shirt like you know thea has one the other guy has one like dude just get a freaking J chase you t-shirt but um you know but yeah it, you know, in the end like i said by the time like axiom and nathan frazier finally got it together they were able to pull off the victory they defeated chase you but this isn't gonna last for long they're probably gonna lose the belt to like gallus or somebody you know because like i said like they're teasing the dissension and nathan frazier is being greedy for gold so we'll see what happens but um kudos to them for retaining you know first time the tag team titles were defended at a heat wave event since 1997 and earlier, um, Ariana Grace and Carmen Petrovich broke up as a tag team. And so I guess Ariana's back to being a heel. And the two of them are going to have a one-on-one -on -one match on Tuesday. Next, we have the NXT Women's Heavyweight Championship match. Roxanne Perez versus Lola Vice. They actually got a championship announcement entrance. So I guess we're just saving it for the top belts. But, you know, um, before the match, when they announced that they were even going to do the match, like, I wasn't even really high on it because... Um, you know, it was like heel versus heel and everything, but then Lola Vice cut Lola Vice cut that promo where, you know, she's talking about her mom and everything. I'm like, well damn, now I feel bad for her. <laughs> so, you know, she went in as the baby face as she should have. And it was actually very good. I mean, the whole match was centered around you know, like um, Lola trying to knock her out and then see if, like, if she could put her away. But it took four pop rocks, if that's what we're still calling it. It took four of those to finally put away Lola Vice. I said it was a pretty clean match. Can't complain. Roxanne Perez is still, I mean, I, didn't, I, mean, I don't know. I, I mean, I didn't think she was going to win, but I was still, like, rooting for Lola Vice. But Roxanne Perez is still your NXT Women's Championship. And we have one more match left for the Heat Wave. Wow, so that was shocking. Um... The NXT main event, the Fatal 4-Way Heavyweight Championship match, Ethan Page, Sean Spears, the young OG, and Trick Williams. Um, Ethan Page won the NXT championship, and I am legitimately shocked. Like, first of all, Javon Evans was, like, the MVP of this match because, I mean, I know he talks about, like, being bouncy, but this kid was everywhere. He was flying through barricades. He was getting knocked off of tables. He was jumping off the top rope. Like, Javon Evans, actually, he, he held it down, but... Um, I mean, the way the match, I'm I'm still shocked, but <laughs> Trick Williams ended up, he, he, you know, he hit the, he hit the knee, like, Javon Evans was down on the mat, he hit the, he hit the knee on, um, on Ethan Page, Ethan Page got knocked out and fell on Javon Evans, the referee started counting to three, and before Trick could break up the pin, Sean Spears is grabbing Trick Williams and preventing him from getting in the ring, and I'm like, bro, why would you not let him break up the pin? Like, that doesn't make any sense to me. And, like, if I was Trick, I'd be pissed, too. Like, Trick, Trick is pissed. I'd, it has to be in Ethan Page's contract that he became NXT. I, 
I don't know, Trick about to get the call up to SmackDown or what? I don't know. I'm I'm confused. Like I'm legitimately confused. But uh, I guess congratulations to Ethan Page. <laughs> but they did my man Trick Willie dirty. Oh man. Um, yeah. Uh, that was how the show ended. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. Um. Now, this was a solid eight show. Um, it was definitely a solid eight show. My favorite match was the Sol Ruka Kalani Jordan match. Um, the surprise title change at the end. I mean, yeah, there's really nothing. You, kudos to Ethan Page. <laughs> Just share questions, comments, and concerns down below and continue to talk about. Um, what do you think of tonight's NXT Heat Wave? And that's another thing. They said that the, they said the Great American Bash was going to be in August. Why would the Great American Bash not be in July, and why would Heat Wave not be in August? I feel like they should reverse that. But share your questions, comments, and concerns down below, and we'll continue to talk about it. Find out what happens on Tuesday for some NXT action, and I guess we'll catch you guys in August for NXT Great American Bash. So thank you for tuning in. As always, check out my Money in the Bank review, my adventures with Superman up on the channel, for Suicide Squad, Isikai, and we'll be back with some more superhero action. I'm going to rest my voice. Make sure you beat the Heat, guys, and until next time, we're out this. See ya.